Okay, so today we're going to learn about how to use Grav 2DC. Um, I really recommend that you watch the Mag 2DC video first and then move on to this one. A lot of things will have already been explained. So open up the folder that has your Grav 2DC EXE file, double click on it, and you'll see the window will open up here. And what we're going to click on, so I'm going to open this up so it's bigger, so you don't have a messy desktop in the background. Click on System Options, click on Begin a New Model, and so Body Density Contrast, well, Body Density is actually the density contrast, so it's the difference between the background rocks and the body you're interested in. So assume maybe you've got a, a rock in the background of the density of 2.5 grams per centimeter cube, and your body is 2.8 grams per centimeter cube, you're going to have a density contrast of 0 0.3. So let's leave the default for now as 0 0.1. Strike length, how much is your body coming in and out of the board? Maximum depth display, um, how much are you, depth are you going to see on the screen? And this all depends on your unit, so is it meters or kilometers? Let's leave it at kilometers for now. And then read in field data, you can actually read in data you've already collected in the field. You can see if that's selected, you cannot select station spacing. If you take it off, you can change your station spacing and the number of points. Obviously, if we've got a spacing of 10 kilometers and 100 points, that means we've got a 10 kilometer line, is that correct? But I'm going to try read and field data, so it's data already that comes with the software. Um, and so if you don't have field data, you can actually test what your survey in the field is going to look like with different station spacings. So obviously, if your station spacing is too big, you might miss smaller bodies, and you can actually check that and test it out. But let's click on Read and Fill Data, click OK. It, hopefully it opens up your folder where you've got Grav2DC and you've got this data, Grav2.dta. If you want to create data to add in here, very important that your first column is um, X, next column is Y, and the third column is your data, and then that you have at least one comment line. If you don't have X and Y, you can also have first column distance, second column data and save this as a, a text file um, with tab delimited or as a .dat file with spacing between the data, then you physically need to go and change the, uh, what is this called, the extension from txt or dta, sorry, dat if it's a .dat file, you need to physically change it to dta, click enter, Word will, um, Windows will complain to you that you're making the program unstable, but it's not, it won't, that's fine. You will only be able to see your data here if you have changed the extension to .dta. So click on that, click on open. You can see here the X column is the position column, is the first column. Second is our gravity data is two. Number of comment lines is three, you have to have at least one. You could have Y data, and that would be column two, you do that by clicking here, and then you would actually have to change the column that you've got your data in. But we don't have Y data, so let's click OK. It says click left button to add corners, right button to close. Click OK. So let's, you can see here is one anomaly, and here's two. Maybe it's a one body with this corner higher than this one. Or it's one body here shallower and one deeper. Or this body has a higher susceptibility and this is a slower susceptibility. I'd assume their susceptibilities would be quite similar if they're in an area together, but I mean they're quite far apart, 80 kilometers apart. Um, but let's try our default susceptibility contrast, sorry, density contrast for now. So I'm going to put in a body. You can play around with the shape. I'm going to put in a dark shaped body for now and let's see how it fits it. So le uh, use your mouse and go left click, left click, left click. When you get to the bottom here, right click and it closes your body. And you can see here, this is our measure data is the dot, and our model data is solid. I'm going to add a second body over here, click on edit, add a body, and then click the same density contrast and strike length, click OK, again left click to add, right click to close. I'm going to make it a bit deeper, left click, left click, left click, left click, oh sorry, and right click. And you can see it's added it there. Keep in mind the fact this has to be geologically sound. So if these are two dikes, they have to go quite deep. So you would actually want to extend them off the screen. This corner shouldn't come up, so I'm going to change it. I'm going to go edit the model, change a corner with the mouse, 
use the next button to select corner and to mark the new location and then write when you're done. So left click to mark it, left click to say where I want it to go, right click that I'm done. Okay, so you can see that we're fitting the data, we're getting there. You can play around with the susceptibilities and the depth. How you do that, I'll show you now. Let me just change this so at least, uh, okay, at least this one extends a bit deeper as well. Right click when I'm done. If I want to change this body, I have to click on it to select it. Click here, change a corner with the mouse. Okay, I'm going to extend these down. Sorry, did I click on it? Click, 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 right click that I'm done. Okay, how to change the parameters? Double click on it. Up comes here, it shows us this is body one. I can change the density contrast. Okay, so to change these values will obviously change your anomaly size and you want to try and fit this modeled curve to the measured curve. And so I can push this up and down arrow to increase or decrease the density contrast. This value on the right is the units at which it will increase. So if I click 0.1 here and I click the up arrow, it increases by 0 0.1, which was too much there. And um, I can also change the depth. I'm going to change it to 1. I can make it deeper, which is obviously not good. I can make it shallower to try to bring it up. Um, I can change the width if the curve is not fitting. Uh, and I can change the strike length. And another button you can use here is the invert brush button, which we discussed under MAG2DC. And so the computer carries out an inversion to find the best property um, that fits, helps the modeled curve fit the measured curve. If I click invert here, it's obviously going to change this density contrast to find the one that best fits. Um, always be careful about clicking this button. It's easy to just push your button and get values, but are these the values logical? I really using samples that you've collected in the field to know exactly what your densities are so that you're not having to change that much. Depth is difficult. Hopefully you have boreholes that know, help you know the depths to the bodies. Um, gives you an idea of the width. So you shouldn't have to play around too much because your model is always going to be ambiguous if you don't have constraints. And so you can only give a range of models that fit your data, then you can't actually say that that is the right model. But let's try this invert button. If I click it, you can see it's made it shallower to try fit the, the curve. And um, my anomaly is a bit too thin though, so I would probably want to make it a bit wider. Let's change the width of the anomaly. Oh. And you can see that will affect it. It makes your anomaly wider, but now it makes it too big. So now let's invert the depth again. Oh, and it's, you can see it's completely given us um, a wrong answer, or one that doesn't really fit for this, um, for this case. So it's up to you to play around. I would, if this happens, I'd make it thin again. I'd make it shallower, and then try to get your anomaly back, and just try to find your best fit. The other thing is that you really don't want to be killing yourself to get an absolutely perfect fit. You don't even know if this model is correct, so you don't want to spend so much time getting it 100% for your model and um, measure curve to match. You just want to get an approximate idea of what body fits here. Click OK, and you would then start playing around with this body over here. You can maybe make it a bit shallower. Um, you can see if I move this window out the way, it's moving it up. And something you can see, it's, it maybe is a little bit too wide, but it's definitely off to the one side, which is not correct. And so let's, I'm just going to make it a little bit shallower again. Okay, so you can see that there's slight mismatch. So I want to move my body further to the left. How do I do that? I go edit the model, move a body, and then I'm going to move it horizontally by five kilometer increments, whatever our units are. You can see that's about right. I can also change this to 2 if I want to make the changes smaller. Click OK. Now it's a bit too high. I'd either change the depth or decrease the density contrast. You can see decreasing it goes down and the color of the body changes because the value of the body has changed. Click OK. So you can really play around with that. Your body, I would expect it if it was a vertical, it would extend further down. You can adjust that. Other things you can do here, you can change corners numerically. So you can actually put in values to make your per body perfectly vertical, if you're worried about that. You can delete corners, you can add corners. Um, okay, you can delete whole bodies. You can hide bodies, so you can see what the curve is just due to one of your bodies. So let's click on 
um, hide, and it's going to hide the body that is selected. You can see this body here is selected. I've hit it, and now I can see my anomaly just due to this body over here. Click Edit, Unhide, and it comes back. Um, I can turn a body if I think it's dipping. I can modify the regional field. Maybe there's a regional um, increase in my field. I can take out that increase to just focus on smaller, value, uh, smaller anomalies. I can either take out a constant value, I can take out a best fit line, interactive spline I can actually play around um, with. Uh, with your best fit line you can actually change it, uh, oh, you can see you don't change it too much, you can play around with the values here, this is your increment at which it changes it. For now I'm happy to just look at mine because it doesn't seem like it's too strong a regional. I can change the unit if you want. Ideally, you should stick with what you had at the beginning. Um, here, these are different inversion options. So we've already inverted for density and for depth, but you can actually go in here and select body inversion parameters. You can choose some of them. You can choose several to do at a time. I really would recommend doing one at a time, maximum two. It becomes very complicated then, um, doing more than that. And really, you need lots of constraints to be able to carry out inversions. Um, these, it's good to give minimum and maximum values that it knows it can play around with, so constrain your inversion. You can even invert a corner of a body. So you can see it says left button, mark the corner, right button, exit. So let's say I'm going to invert for this corner here, and I'm going to right click to exit. Selection complete. And I'll go here, invert the model. And you can see here it's not inverting the density, not inverting horizontal position or depth or body rotation, but it's inverting for one corner. And it's going to carry out 10 iterations, and it's on body 2. I click OK. It's shifted in ever so slightly. So you can play around with these values, with this function if you want. Show body numbers. It takes away the densities and shows only the numbers of the body. Show plan view of model. But that's looking at from the top down. I'm going to click off of it because I want to see my vertical cross section. Display differences between the curves. So this is the difference between the modeled and calculated value. And this is great because it really gives you an idea of your um, residual or how poor your fit is or how good your fit is. I have no units up here because the units are too small. If I double click over here, um, I can change my label increments. Let's see if 0 0.5 is okay. Okay, so I've changed it to 0 0.5 and I can see. And so your um, values are not fitting the curve by about 1.5 to, uh, well, 0 to 1.5 milligals. You can see now if I go back and I take off here, display difference, my units have gone crazy because I'm still at a 0 0.5 labeling increment, which is just too much. So if I click on 2, click OK, I can see it better. So you can actually see you can change your axis values. Maximum depth display, minimum display, and the increment. Any other options here? Add borehole data. Um, you can add data. I honestly haven't tried this, so give it a try. Send me a video if you do. Um, set the model display limits. You can change that and play around with it. Again, remember we need to save our model because if this crashes, you're going to lose everything. Go save the current model. And I'm going to save over my earlier model. I was playing with Grav, Stephanie, two bodies, just so I have details. Don't forget to put dot .mod. You really need to add this extension, else you won't be able to add the model back in. Um, you can physically add the extension when you're in a folder. It'll moan at you that you're making the file unstable, but it's not a problem. But it's way easier to just do it now. Click Save. So I'm going to overwrite it. Model saved successfully. And then last thing, just to show you, if I came back later, um, oh, you can edit your field data here if you want to. So let's say I'm going to load an old model. You can see I would choose my model from the list here, and it loads it back in. It's actually got this original space in here for my y-axis. So this is how you use Grav2DC. Great for planning, for going out into the field. Great for seeing what your survey is going to give you, um, depending on the different bodies in an area and great to test whether you should be changing your station spacing or not, and great for when you actually have collected data and then you want to come back and model it. But try and use as many constraints as possible when you do your modeling. Look at um, seismic or resistivity data that you have so you know the position and depths of bodies. Use borehole data so you know how the rock types change. 
um, as much data as you can have will really help you make the best model possible.